Welcome back. Happy Friday. Entry 13, Systematic Trading Journal. I am looking at the idea of buying pullbacks as an entry for a trend following system. Not something you hear a lot about. Normally, trend followers are focused on breakouts, buying, uh, buying the high, getting in at a new all-time high or a relative high. But in exploring this position builder system that uh, Sweeney proposes in his book, Campaign Trading, it looks like buying pullbacks is also a viable way to get into uh, a trend trade. And it can be a standalone trade or it can be used in conjunction with a trend, pure trend system like Sweeney proposes in his book. So just as a quick refresher, the trend signal is using two moving averages. If both moving averages are moving up together, you're long. If both moving averages are moving down together, you're short. And if one's moving up and one's moving down, you're flat. So for the trend trade, uh, the day after or the bar after you see that both moving averages are moving up together, you get long. And then you stay long until uh, one of the moving averages changes and then you get out. With the position builder, his idea is um, as price comes down to the long moving average, which he kind of views as the value area for the trend trade, if you think about the longest look back you're using, to evaluate a trend, when price gets back around that level, it's considered a, a good buy or a good value. Uh, price has come down from its recent high back to the average, so it should theoretically be a good pay, place to um, either buy or buy more. So I've been trying to code this in trading blocks over the last few days and trying to get it in line with not only the simple rules that Sweeney actually explicitly lists in the book, but also in the um, in the spirit of how he describes the system working uh, in the book. So he only gives three explicit rules for the position builder. One is you have a trend trade underway. He says the best indication that a trend is persisting is that you already are in a trend trade, and that makes sense. He gives no time period of how long the trend trade should have been on before you evaluate before you look at a position building trade so uh, he leaves that open um, number two is you put a basically a stop or a buy limit at the price of the moving average and then you exit the trade at the same time as the underlying trend trade in the verbiage of the book, he talks about before you can get long uh, at the long moving average, price first has to come down through the short moving average. And that implies that you're only taking trend trades when the short moving average is above the long moving average and when price is above both of them. Not said explicitly in the book, but the way I understand that, or the way I interpret that, is that you need this kind of perfect uh, setup. And so I kind of went about programming my blocks in that manner, but now I'm thinking that I might be overthinking it. So let me show this in a, on a chart. So imagine that we're up here, um, looks like about right here, this long moving average starts moving up, the short moving average is moving up. So let's say you get long on this day right here. <clears throat> your short moving average is above your long moving average. Price is above both. So price comes down. Uh, for his day trade that we covered earlier, you would have taken the day trade on this day, um, closed it at the end of the day, and on down the line, each one of these days where you have price interacting with the short moving average, you would have taken a, another day trade. Well, now we see price down here on this day touches the long moving average. So we would get long with this position building trade and just ride this thing all the way up here until price turns over or the short moving average turns over uh, on this day and then we'd get out. So in my mind, that's like the per picture perfect setup for this kind of trade. 
We have everything aligned, price above, short moving average, short moving average above, long moving average. So I tried to code these systems to reflect this kind of behavior. And um, I'm not sure after testing some of this stuff it's really necessary. It adds a bunch of complication. I think it's what Sweeney intended meaning you you know you're trading this manually using a set of rules it's not meant to be programmed uh, specifically or necessarily into a fully algorithmic hands-off system so like over the past few days like I mentioned I've been I've been trying these out I mentioned I think I tried the day trade with the moving average orientation filter in there I tried them where you needed you needed price to open above either moving average and then have an intraday correction down to the moving average. And at some point along the way, I started just stripping all of these, all of these filters off and just letting the trades happen. Because what, what, I think what we tend to try to do as traders is filter out the bad trades. We want to try to eliminate as many of the losing trades as possible, which kind of theoretically makes sense, and it makes you feel better. You're not taking a bunch of losing trades in a row. But let me show you here as a really good example um, why it doesn't necessarily hurt and why maybe sometimes it's better to just have some more simple rules let the losing trades happen and just let it let it go the way it is and um, in the end you're better off for it so this what i'm showing here now is about as simple as i can make it the only setup for the code is both the moving averages are moving up together and we have a limit order set at the price of the long moving average from the day before and you can see here, um, we had the, the short moving average moving down. So as soon as it turns back up, now this system is primed. The setup is primed. Both moving averages are moving up together. And then on the first day here, we have an open underneath the long moving average. So that triggers the, um, the buy order. And you can see we get stopped out the same day. So again, there's nothing there's nothing to tell this this system um, not to just keep doing this over and over and over again. And in my mind, I thought I didn't want to do this, but look, we start we just start taking these losing trades day after day, day after day. Price is underneath the long moving average, but both the moving averages are still moving up. Then all of a sudden, you catch this trade right here. This on this day, you see price still opens underneath the long moving average but from there it just takes off and goes and we go all the way until the short moving average turns down which is our exit signal just like the original trend trade um, and we catch this big this big run up so notice that when we entered here our short moving average is underneath our long moving average so if you're going by Sweeney's verbiage in the book you wouldn't have taken this trade by his explicit rules you would um, so I tried this as a filter the other thing I tried to try to eliminate these these um, these trades where you have a consistent open underneath the long moving average where you get in and get stopped out get in and get stopped out I tried coding where you look for price to be above the moving average the day before um, as an additional setup. So if we were doing that, our system wouldn't be primed until this day. Um, and then we wouldn't enter until this bar here. So we're missing this little chunk of profit here. So we get in a few days late with a little later profit. If we're using the moving average filter where you have to have the short moving average above the long moving average look at this we don't have the crossover until right here nowhere in here does price ever come back to the long moving average again so you're missing that whole move um, requiring this specific setup 
So after I did all this and ran all the tests, I did the, the, the max adverse excursion analysis just like I did with the prior trades. Every time you add any kind of additional setup, like the moving average orientation or having the close or the open be above the moving average and then, then waiting intraday to have the signal rather than um, just letting it trade if it opens below the moving average, it reduces the sample size in the test and ultimately it reduced profitability in every single test that I ran which was really eye-opening to me because you're taking a ton more losing trades um, without these fitting, you know, fitting these special situations. Um, so it seems like just having the two trends, I'm sorry, the two moving averages, your two trend indicators is all you need. And then if you use this, this kind of different entry trigger rather than um, just the pure trend, this, um, this one additional thing where you need price to touch or go below the long moving average is enough to make this work. So it's been pretty eye-opening to me and I can understand how Sweeney came about these rules. These are the kind of things that you, you where you're taking a, a discretionary system and then trying to fit it, fit a system to it. And it makes sense if you're sitting and watching this all day. But when we can just put really simple rules into a, a back tester and actually run all these different systems and see how they perform differently, we can see that in this case, just simpler is better. We have way more sample size. The average trade uh, return is higher. And the average trade expectancy is higher too. And I'm going to do another video um, detailing the specific performance and showing how this position builder trade and the pure trend trade work really well together. I ran like a, a full-on um, legitimate back test using a fixed fractional money manager, not trading one contract at a time, but trading a, you know, a, a volatility-based position sizing. Ran these two together with an equal allocation to each, and it, it it's like head and shoulders better than running um, either one of them in a, on its own. You get a higher return with a lower drawdown and lower volatility. So I'll be able to detail that all in another video, but for this time I just wanted to speak to this idea of not over filtering. Um, trying simple first and try to, try to take away more rules than you add, because ultimately it leads to a better sample size and in this case, better performance. So I think now I'm gonna to have to go back and relook at the day trade system and maybe even relook at the trend system. Because if you remember, or if you look back at the previous videos, you can see I introduced some additional setups to try to prevent the same trade from getting re-entered after, after it was stopped out, like letting the signals refresh before we got back in. And it may be better to just let it eat and um, take the losing trades um, and just keep trying. Because our stops in these systems are so tight. I mean, we're running stops around one ATR. So we're taking really small losses every time we, our stop gets hit. So um, I think I'm going to have to go back and just try everything again and see if the performance isn't better uh, removing rules rather than adding new ones. Um, so I learned a lot this week. Um, still really enjoying this process and um, doing this testing like this. I think the max adverse excursion or the excursion analysis process has really helped open my eyes to looking for um, the actual movement that comes from the signals rather than relying on a monetary based back test because I'm really seeing and able to distinguish between good signals and bad signals because um, you don't have that added complication of the, the money management aspect uh, skewing the results of the test. So that's it for this time. Um, I'll be back next time with some performance on dip buying uh, with a trend following system. So. Uh, that's it. Everybody have a good weekend and see you next time.